date time functions we can pull up the day the month the year e date means elapsed date so you can say i want to go forward three months or backwards three months eo month means move forward however many months and go to the end of that month you can pull out hours minutes and seconds you can say what day of the week it is you can say what number the week is within the year so it's the third week of the year and you can even do a fraction how many days into the year is it as a fraction of a complete year <coughs> so for this I'm using a, a start date of 15th of January 2013 Remember I was saying serial dates? This is, if we look at the, the format of this, it's a general format. So I took the, the date that's in A1 and use a general format. So January 15th is 41,289 days since January 1st, 1900. And the reason it's important to understand that when you start dealing with date functions is some of the dates, some of the, uh, the functions return your value as a serial date. Mm -hmm. So day, day A1 comes back as 15. Month A1 comes back as one. Year 2013, very straightforward. E date, elapsed date. If I add eight months to it, it gives me September 15th. So no matter what I, I do up here, if I took this and I made this the 23rd, it's going to move to the 23rd. So it adds exactly eight months. So it just changes the month value. Does it, in days, is that 30 or 31? Or does it not? It does it's go, go the 23rd to the 23rd to the 23rd. It doesn't okay. care. All right. It's not adding anything other than saying that it was the 23rd, so it's going to be the 23rd. You can also use it to subtract. So eight months ago was May 2012, May 23rd, 2012. So it allows you to, to jump around like that. And end of month gives you the end of the month. So if I were to take end of month and make it a one, it gives you February 28th. So it doesn't matter what day you start, it just says this is the last day of the month. And then year fraction, what you do is you, uh, you say what date you want to compare it to. So you can say, what's the year fraction since, um, I can make this zero, and it would say how many years, and fraction of years, was that, it's been 113 years, since January 1st, 1900. So whatever the serial date is, it counts how many years, decimal, how, what part of a year it is. And it doesn't matter if it's a leap year or that, it says this is how far into the year it is percentage-wise. So you said the serial date's always set at 1900? Yes. So can you reset the serial date? So if I'm trying, if I'm working on something where I'm trying to calculate somebody's service, no, you can't. You can't reset the serial okay. date. The serial date is always 1900. Excel thinks started 1900. Okay. How far from 1900? Okay. But if I have two dates, I can say I want to know um, January 13th. I want to go back 365 days. Or if I take two dates. Um, I'll do another date here. Um, so I'll say 12 slash 12 slash 2012. And then I can say equals this minus this. And it tells me how many days difference. Okay? It doesn't look right because this wants to be shown as a serial date. So I'd have to go through and make it a general, but it's 42 days difference. Okay. So that's the challenge when you're dealing with dates, and that's why I, I really want to spell out serial dates, 
because if you're not understanding, when you take two dates and you do math with them, it returns a date, but you might not want a date. Any other questions about the date functions embedded within Excel? <coughs> you guys don't ask questions. This is going to be a really short class. <coughs>